all over the country there are terrifying yet interesting places to visit on road trips, like the Bloody Bride Bridge in Boy Scout Lanes in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, or maybe Jeremy Swamp Road in Southbury, Connecticut. There are endless locations that you can find all over the country, and I'd love to know some of your local infamous areas in the comments. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends, and welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true road trip horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I would love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going on a daily basis. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and get ready for some creepy and allegedly true road trip horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. Hey Swamp Folk, right before we jump into this episode, I just want to let you know that my new podcast, The Dark Side of YouTube, which you can find on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and my second channel on YouTube, is currently giving away an Oculus Quest 2 bundle. If you're interested in winning that, all you have to do is leave us a 5-star rating on Apple Podcasts, and in your review, leave the hashtag Darksiders. We will be picking a winner in a few days. And not to worry, anybody who doesn't have Apple and can't leave a review over there, we will be doing another giveaway very soon that can include even more people. Thank you so much, and let's get into these stories. Last month, my mom and dad decided to fill up on food and gasoline so we could drive up to Montana for a road trip to visit my friends and family over there. My family, my aunt in specific, we'll call her Dolly, owns a good piece of property in the Montana countryside. Her two sons, Clint and Coulter, live on the property with her, so we get the chance to meet them for the very first time. After a few days of driving north, we arrived at their house at about 6 a.m. Clint and Coulter are in their 20s, so they aren't much older than me. We hit it off as I had known them most of my entire life but never actually met them met them in person. The six of us spent the day shooting guns, riding horses, throwing axes, and learning how to rope cattle. In case you couldn't already tell, Clint and Coulter are cowboys, but nothing out of the ordinary happened in that day. The scary part is what happened late that night. It was about 9pm, after a long day we all sat by a bonfire. We made and cooked small steaks and corn on the cob. After we ate, I got my guitar, Clint got his harmonica, and Coulter got his fiddle or violin, as most other people know it as. Anyway, we started playing our instruments and having a great time. Soon enough, my mom, dad, and Aunt Dolly began to dance. A couple of her hounds around the fire started hopping around and joining us. The oldest of the four just started wagging his tail. We had fun for about five to ten minutes until we heard a loud, disturbing noise. The land around this area is flat, and there were little to no trees, so it's easy to see stuff in the distance but it's pitch black outside other than the brightness from our fire. Whatever this was, it sounded like a cross between a yell from a man and a gunshot, and maybe even the cry of a buffalo. We all went pale, but Clint was the first to get up, draw his revolver from his side, and aim it in the direction we heard the yell come from. Run to the house and grab the rifles, Clint told me in a deep voice. Thankfully, my dad had a 38 special with him, so he could cover me on my way to the house. I ran for about 15 feet and tripped. Coulter ran over to help me up. When I looked up, the moonlight shone on something far in the distance. It looked to be about 7 foot tall, skinny with long hair. It looked like it had horns or something. The shock of what I saw had made me nearly pass out. I would have fallen over like a dead man if Coulter did not hold me up. He set me down close to the fire. Clint got on one knee before me and asked, Are you alright? I answered back saying, I, I saw something. No one asked what I saw, but I'm pretty sure it was a skimwalker. I asked Coulter the following day if he saw it too, and he said no. No one else even remembered the loud yell. It's almost as if their minds were wiped. I'm starting to think it was all just a dream. But if it was a dream, why do I have a scraped up knee? My boyfriend Kai and I decided to go on a weekend road trip, and we also wanted to bring my boyfriend's Doberman Colt along with us. We took my dad's Ford F-150, which he let me use. Seeing as I was the only one who drove it, I put on the truck bed cover to protect our stuff. We packed enough food and supplies to last the weekend and set out. The first night went great, 
We ate dinner, swam in the river, fooled around a bit, and left after breakfast the next morning. Later that day, we were listening to music and joking, and half looking for places we could pitch our tent for the night. About two hours after we left that small town we stayed in the day before, we found a place we could stay. I pulled in as the sun was setting, and we went outside and got our stuff while Colt looked around. He was always protective and cautious of strangers, so we let him do his thing. Suddenly, he started growling. Kai and I looked over to the direction Colt was barking and saw a man appear from the clearing. Colt began growling aggressively and Kai had to hold him by the collar. This man looked to be about in his mid-40s and not really built but kind of lanky, perhaps around 6'3". My boyfriend is also 6'3 and in incredible shape. He hits the gym religiously as soon as he can. I'm 5'9 and have an athletic build but by no means do I look strong. The man seemed to notice we were younger because he dropped his creeper face and smiled wide. What are you two kids doing out here? He spoke. His voice was gravelly and sounded like he had routinely smoked since he was 12 years old, and he didn't even acknowledge Colt, even though he was barking and starting to foam at the mouth. My boyfriend spoke up before I could say anything. We just decided to come hang out and get out of the way, you know? The man chuckled a bit and looked over at me. <laughs> that pretty little thing, your sister? I stood there like a statue and said, no, I'm his girlfriend. The man nodded slowly and answered. Ah, that makes sense. We don't get too out of hand. He said before winking and walking into the woods again. I looked over at Kai and looked back at the woods. What the heck was that? He asked me. I just shrugged and kind of tried to shake that feeling of fear off my shoulders before we went back to setting up camp. After a while, we lit a fire and started snacking on some chips. I started thinking about the man and instinctively looked back to where he had disappeared into the woods. I saw nothing, absolutely nothing, which for some reason scared me. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Suddenly Colt, lying between Kai and me, sat up and the fur in his neck stood up. He looked over the fire and into the woods directly across from us. Kai slowly grabbed a large pocket knife from his hip, which I didn't know he had before, but in hindsight I'm very glad he did. He gestured for me to get into the tent and slowly followed me, not taking his eyes from the woods. I whispered to him, do you think it's just a coyote or something? He shrugged. I don't know, but Colt doesn't alert for nothing. There's something in the tree line. He was cut off by Colt snarling. I thought he was aggressive before, but this was a whole nother level. I didn't even think dogs could get to this level. Kai practically laid over me to shield me from whatever this dog was growling at. Suddenly, Colt's aggressive snarls turned to cries and whimpers, and he ran into the tent and ran behind us. This freaked me out, and I started crying hysterically. Kai signaled for me to keep quiet, which was when we noticed there were footsteps outside of the tent. Kai lightly pushed me to the back of the tent, hunched over, and made his way to the front. He went to peek out, and I kicked his ankle. He looked at me confused, and I shook my head. We suddenly heard a familiar voice, and my blood turned to ice. Hey, I just wanted to let you know, your fire's still lit, not very safe. Kai cleared his throat, still holding the knife, and walked out of the tent. Thanks, we were going to put it out soon. I could hear the fake confidence in his voice. Be careful out here, son. Some creep will kill a young man like you. Pretty things like that girl. Say, where is she? Kai lied. Oh, she went to bed a few minutes ago. The man let out a disappointed sigh, and he said, Well then, good night. And I heard footsteps go off back into the woods. Kai came into the tent and said, forget the tent, get Colt, and get in the truck. I didn't question it. I just got up, grabbed Colt's collar, and I kept crying as we got into the truck, hopped in, and started it up. And when we took off, only then, about 30 minutes later, did I even remotely feel at all safe again. Kai finally decided to tell me the man had a gun in his front pocket and did a lousy job of hiding it. We continued moving down a country road at about maybe 20 miles per hour and suddenly a large coyote walked out in front of us. We slammed on the brakes and it ran off. Any regular night, I would have just continued driving. But after everything that happened, I just sat there and started crying again. Kai unbuckled the seatbelt and wrapped his arms around me. Even though this might not sound scary to some, this experience horrified me. The feeling of helplessness scared me. The thought of that man using the gun on Kai frightened me. The idea that my dad would have no idea of knowing what happened to us scared me. An actual human is way scarier than any cryptid or anything supernatural because humans are real and can cause real danger. Stay safe out there. A 
Around three years ago, my high school class went on a hiking field trip. It would be a three-night trip. Luckily, in my class, I had my friend Jonas and my girlfriend Ashley and my brother David. We were super excited about the class trip because we had never been on an overnight road trip in school before. It was two days before the trip. I was hanging out at break with Jonas. We were talking about what was going to happen on the trip. I'm super pumped for this dude, Jonas said. Let's hope we don't get eaten by a mountain lion, I joked. Funny joke, man. Way to ruin the trip for me, Jonas said. Don't worry, Jonas. You won't get eaten since you have no meat on your bones, I joked. Oh, shut it, Luke. It's not like you have any meat either, he responded. That's when David joined us. Sup, guys. Where's Ashley? He asked. She's talking to her friends right now, I answered. Then the bell rang. Well, I'll see you guys later. The day of the trip had finally come. When we all piled on the bus, all four of us were lucky to get in the back seats together. Ashley and I were on the left, and Jonas and David were on the right. We were riding the typical school bus that picks you up in the morning, the big old yellow thing. Look at the lovebirds sitting aside from each other, Jonas said. Oh, shut up, Jonas, Ashley said. I don't get how you can stand those two, she said. Oh, trust me, I can't, I replied. The bus ride was about five hours long. Half the kids were already asleep by the time we were halfway there. When we finally reached the mountains, we stepped out of the bus and couldn't believe our eyes. It was such a beautiful sight. High mountains, with dark green leaves all over the trees surrounding it. You can hear rivers and creeks flowing and birds chirping. It looked like a paradise. Our teacher told us to come on when we got done taking in the sights because we had to meet up with the guide. As we made our way to the ranger station to pick up the map, I couldn't help but notice this eerie feeling that I had. It felt like someone was watching us. Hey, speed it up, man, Jonas shouted. Okay, okay, Mr. Impatient, I responded. Our guide was already waiting for us when we got to the ranger station. Good morning, folks. My name is Jones, and I will be your guide for the next three days. Jones told us everything. He handed us all a map and spoke. Anyone who needs to use the restroom before we go, it's going to be about three miles before we make it to our campsite, needs to go now. After everyone stopped using the restroom, we started making our way to the campsite. All right, kids, don't forget this is a science field trip. That means we will be learning about wildlife here, Mrs. Fink said. I was excited to learn about the wildlife here since I liked animals. Not many other people shared my exact thought, though. I'm excited to see the waterfall when we get there, Ashley said. Me too. Hopefully Jonas might fall in, I spoke, and we both laughed. I heard that. I'm not deaf, you know, Jonas responded. Oh, my bad. I thought you were blind, David said. Shut up, David, Jonas said. About one and a half miles into our hike, I got that same feeling again. It felt like we were being watched. You okay, Luke? David asked. Yeah, you've been acting strange since we got here, Ashley said. I'm not too sure, guys. It feels strange out here, like we are all being watched or something, I answered. Looks like the mountain lion will get you after all, Jonas joked. We continued the entire time. It felt like we were being watched, and one time, I could have swore I saw something peeking at me from behind a tree. When our class eventually made it to the campsite, it was about 3 p.m., so it was still bright outside. There were about 15 kids, and we only brought five tents, so three kids would have to sleep in one tent. The teacher and the guide brought their own. I had to share a tent with Jonas and David, and Ashley got her two friends Kylie and Whitney. When we finished setting up our tents, the tour guide said we would go to the waterfall since it was still bright. The waterfall was about a mile away from our campsite. Ashley and her friends were excited to go. David, Jonas, and our friend Michael weren't all stoked. We were the only guys on the trip. When we made it to the waterfall, it was just as you expected. Water falling off a cliff. Not that exciting. While looking at the waterfall, I thought I got a small glimpse of what I could tell to be a head peeking out from a side of rock. Hey guys, did you see that? I asked. See what? They said. Something is peeking out from that rock. I answered. Pro, what are you talking about? Michael asked. Don't worry about him, Michael. He's been acting strange the entire time we've been here, David said. I swear I saw something, guys, I said. Stop trying to scare us. Like, it's getting old, Jonas said. I'm not trying to scare you guys. I saw something peeking out from behind that rock. I spoke. Give him a break, guys, Ashley said. Did you see it, Ashley? I asked. No, I, I didn't, Luke. It could have just been your eyes playing tricks on you, after all. It is close to sunset, she said. Maybe you're right, Ashley, I said. 
Once we get back to camp and eat, you should be fine. Michael then interrupted. When we returned to camp, I still couldn't get over what I saw and how nobody believed me. When I started thinking, I thought about the story Richard told me, about how he and Jerry were attacked by a creature a while back. Sadly, they weren't on this trip. They snuck out of Jerry's house to Ding Dong Ditch when he kept seeing a black figure the entire time followed them. Eventually, when they made their way back, they smelt something horrible. They went to check it out, and it turned out to be some sort of creature. They were then attacked, but they somehow made it home safely. When he told the story, I thought he was lying, but I was beginning to believe it was true while out here. We weren't near northern Alabama anymore, so I was just thinking I saw things or was hallucinating. When we got back to camp, our guide asked us if the four of us wanted to volunteer to do some firewood scouting to collect firewood. Me, Michael, David, and Jonas volunteered to do it. The guide showed us where to look and told us not to go too far away from the campsite. We made our way from the camp and into the woods. We split up to look when we got to where the guide told us to go. While I was looking, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned to look, but there was nothing there. Hello? Is anyone there? I asked, but I got no response. I ignored it and kept looking for firewood. While looking, I heard more footsteps, and they were closer now. Hello? Is anyone there? I shouted. Truthfully, I was starting to get freaked out at this point. I turned around when suddenly, boo, Jonas shouted, and I freaked out. You should have seen the look on your face, David said. You were freaked out, Michael joined in. That wasn't funny, guys, I said. It was, David responded. How about we finish getting the firewood, I said. Fine, but you must admit that was pretty funny, Michael asked. Okay, yeah, it was a little funny, I responded. See, I told you. All right, let's get back to the camp now. Jonas insisted. When we got back to the camp, we gave the firewood to our guide, and he made a campfire for us. We ate dinner, and after that we made s'mores. It was pretty good, not going to lie. After that, we had a scary story contest. I won when we finished doing all of that. It was time for us to finally go to sleep. While in the tent with Jonas and David, I had to use the restroom. I got out of the tent and went a little way down the trail. When I was done, I started to make my way back up the course again. I heard footsteps once more. Ha ha, very funny guys, that's getting old, come on now, I spoke. I got no response though. Must have been a deer or something, I thought to myself. I started making my way back up the trail when I heard even more footsteps, this time louder than before. A stench began to fill the air. It smelled like a dead animal. I turned around and saw a silhouette in the dark. I freaked out and started running as fast as humanly possible. I heard it coming up behind me. It was quick, swift. It let out a roar resembling a deer and a lion mixed together. I was almost to camp when the creature stopped following me. I quickly got into my tent and zipped it up as fast as I could. Jonas and David asked me what had happened. I was shaking and stuttering my words. Some, something ch chased me to the camp, I said. It was probably a mountain lion or something, Jonas said. No, it was tall and stood on two legs, I responded, and it let out a roar resembling like a deer and a lion, I said. You were probably tired and hallucinating, David said. Maybe you're right, I responded. We can talk about this in the morning. When morning came, we were the first group to wake up. We decided to go down to the place where I saw the thing. While looking around, Jonas found a track that looked like a deer's track. See, I told you you were hallucinating, David said. I swear I saw something, though, I said. Yeah, you saw something, all right. A deer, Jonas joked. Funny, Jonas, I spoke. Anyways, let's head back to camp before everyone else wakes up, I said. When we got back to the camp, everyone else was still asleep. We decided to go ahead and make breakfast for everyone. When everyone woke up, they were met with eggs and bacon. The teacher and the guide thanked us, and when everyone was finished, the tour guide told us what we were going to do that day. There would be three groups of five people, and each group would have one team leader. The groups would go out into the woods and write down all the wildlife that they saw. For example, if one of us sees a mushroom, we tell the team leader to write down brown mushroom. If someone sees a mouse, then obviously we'd write down that we saw a mouse. The group with the most written down gets double dessert that night. So, for the groups, me, Ashley, Jonas, David, and Michael, and the group leader for us was David, the guide showed us the area we had to stay on in the map, and everyone was in a team. Then, once it's noon, everyone needs to head back to the camp. Our team was already off to a good start, we had like 15 things written down within just a few minutes. 
It was about 11 a.m. when we ran into another group. We said our hellos and continued. At this time, we had about 30 things written down, so I had forgotten entirely about what happened the night before. While we were still looking for stuff to write on our list, I got that strange feeling again, but this time much more intense. Like it was all around me. That's when I heard Ashley scream. The creature was standing under a small oak tree about 30 yards from our position. I couldn't see it that well though. We started running away from that thing as fast as we could. We ran off the trail trying to lose it, which was a terrible idea. When we eventually stopped to catch our breath, it was nowhere to be seen. I think we lost it, guys, Michael said. What was that thing? Ashley asked. That's the thing I saw last night, I answered. You went outside last night without telling anybody? You could have gotten hurt, and nobody would have known, Ashley exclaimed. Now's not the time for that. We are lost, and something is hunting us, David said. How will we get back to camp if we don't have a map? Ashley asked. We must find the trail. It shall lead us back to the camp, Jonas said. I remember which way we ran, Michael exclaimed. Would you like to lead the way then? I asked. Yeah, Michael said. When we started following Michael, we kept our eyes and ears open and tried to make as little noise as possible. It's way too quiet out here. I don't hear a single bird, Jonas said. For once, I agree with you, Jonas, Ashley mentioned. Guys, shut up. We're making too much noise, David said. We are still following Michael at this point. It was probably only 1 p.m. before we found the trail. We need to hurry and get back to camp before we get in trouble, Michael said. Are you sure this is the right trail, I asked. Yes, Luke, I'm sure. There's a slight problem, though. I don't know what part of the trail we are on, Michael said. Oh, isn't that just great? We're lost, Jonas mentioned once more. Listen, everyone needs to calm down, okay? We need to find a sign or something, that's all. It gives us all the directions we will need, David said. Well, which way should we go then? I say we head down the trail, so we don't get too deep into the woods. I said. All right, let's go then, Jonas mentioned. There was a faint breathing noise. We all started shaking at this point. Then we heard footsteps, loud footsteps. It sounded as if someone was dropping sledgehammers on the ground. That's when we listened to the lion deer-like roar once more. We started running like bats out of hell. It was right behind us and we could smell that horrible smell. We could hear its footsteps as it got closer and closer and closer. We didn't know where we were going. That's when I tripped on a tree root. I screamed for help and David came back to pick me up, but the creature hit him down. Jonas came and threw a stick at it. I was able to get up and help David up. Michael shined a flashlight at it and it let out this god-awful roar again. I was able to get a good look at it this time. This thing was eight feet tall and had a deer skull for its head. It was skinny to the point that it looked like a skeleton. It hit Michael with its forearm. I screamed for Ashley to run. When I did that, it grabbed me and tried to bite at me. David was able to throw a rock at it, which caused it to let out another roar and distract it. It scratched David and ran away. David, are you okay? I asked. Yeah, I'm fine, he responded. We need to find Ashley. She ran that way, Jonas yelled. While walking down the trail, we found a fire watch tower. We walked up the stairs and knocked on the door and were greeted by a ranger who let us inside. What happened to you, kiddos? Why are you guys out here so late? He asked. We're on a school trip, and yesterday we were doing an activity and got lost. We also got attacked by a bear, Michael said. So you guys are the kids we should be looking out for, he said. I will contact your guide and tell her we found you, he said. Can you also ask them if they found Ashley? I asked. When we met with our class, our teacher and guide hugged us and asked if we were alright. Ashley ended up running into them eventually, petrified. We soon left that day, never to return. About a month later, a group of college students went camping and went missing. I'm pretty sure I know what happened to them. If you're ever up on a hiking trip and feel like something is watching you, keep an eye out because you might not be alone. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true road trip horror stories that'll freak you out tonight. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this episode gets, the more YouTube promotes it in the algorithm, and that helps the swamp grow its ever-expanding waters. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, maybe give us a 5-star rating over there as it helps me grow on those platforms, and is very much appreciated. If you have a story that you would like to share in a future episode, whether it's a road trip story or something else, I'm always looking for brand new scary stories to share. Submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. 
if you're on the go, but don't have YouTube Premium and still want to download and listen to your favorite Swamp Dweller series no matter where you are. You can download them absolutely free from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, and just about anywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. I'd love to know what story tonight was your favorite in the comments down below. Let's start a discussion. If you would like to support the Swamp even further, maybe check out the merch store. I've got t-shirts, hoodies, hats, and more. I'd love to see you guys wearing some cool Swamp threads. If you want to keep up with the Swamp all around the internet, join me in my Discord, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'll see you all soon with another creepy episode.